today we can do um transformations transformations okay so let me, so let me search for that search for that okay transformation in great great have you learned it before? You learned it before. Yeah. Best thing. Best thing. We just started learning it um, this week. Okay. Okay. Good. We're using vectors. So that means it's like parts of an equation that contains x axis and y axis. Okay. So they're saying where the top value represents the movement in x means on the positive axis, which is the horizontal axis. Then the negative. When you're when you're on the horizontal x-axis, positive means you're you're moving in the right direction. Negative means you're moving in the left direction. While the bottom value represents movement in the y-axis. Y-axis is the vertical. Okay, if you're looking at your graph. So if you're going upwards, means you're moving positive. If you're going downwards, you're moving negative. Okay, so now they gave us a practical example <clears throat> of the vector. So they said x will be minus 3 and y will be 2. So what does that mean? If you're plotting that direction on a graph, means that 3, three is on the x-axis, right? So that means you're moving 3 steps or 3 units to the left-hand side. While on the y-axis means you're moving two spaces above, which is positive, okay? Because two is a positive in integer. Okay, now let's look at this example. It said translate a shape A by the vector minus four and one. That means the shape is on a certain position on this graph, okay? But they want you to move that shape by minus four on the x-axis and one on the y-axis. Okay, so let's read. They say the vector in the question has a minus four on top and a one on the bottom, which means we need to translate the, this shape four spaces to the left and one space upward. One way to do this is by moving the corners one by one. If you shift each corner, four spaces left and one space up, all that remains is to join up your new set of corners and you will get the translated shapes. So this is what they have. So let's assume we have, first of all, let's assume we have a graph. So the question says, we have a triangle at a certain point. So let's um, transform this triangle by a, by a particular, so let's get a triangle. Let's look for a triangle. Let's use this size. Okay, so now let's make the triangle to be like this. Okay, so let me push it this way. <clears throat> so um okay okay so let's assume are you there are you there, are you there? Yeah, can you yeah. hear me good so now let's say we have this triangle and they're asking us to transform this triangle by by this okay let me Transform it yeah. by, um, let's just assume. Well, I have to draw everything so that you understand it very well. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's assume we're transforming it by, say, um, 
Um, okay, let's say by minus three and what? Two. Let's assume we are transforming it by those two numbers. Oh, undo. Sorry. Let me change the comma to minus three and two. Okay. So remember the top integer represents what axis? The top integer. What does it represent? It represents the x axis, right? You remember? While the bottom represents the y axis. You remember? Yeah. Good. So, what they're telling you to do now is this. They're asking you to move. Now they said transform. Transform the shape, right? By this vector, by these dimensions written here, minus three and two. Transform means you're moving it from one location to the other. You're not changing the size, you're not shape changing the shape. You're only moving it from one location to the other. So how do we do this? We are going to move each of the points, each point, okay? So let's say we're gonna move these points, this point, and this point accordingly. So they said we should do, okay, let's see what we did here. So we're going to move the vector in the question has a minus four on top and a one on the bottom. That means we need to translate the shape four spaces to the left and one space up. Four spaces to the left and one space up. So let's try and see from our image. We're going to do four spaces. So this is one, one, two, three, four. That means this point is going to be moved to this point. And then, okay, sorry. Let's not do, let's not, let's follow our own. Let's follow our own dimension. What was our dimension? It was good. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. sorry. I thought you couldn't hear you. Okay. So we're moving minus three on the x axis, means we are moving three steps, three units. One, two, three. Okay. Why is this not responding? Because it's going the. Why don't okay. you put the other direction there? Okay, it's all right. So we're moving one step, two step, one step, two steps, three steps, minus three, right? Yes. Minus three. So this part of the triangle is going to be here. This point of the triangle is going to be moved here. And then for the y axis, we're moving it two steps upward. So we're going to count one, two. Okay. So that means the triangle is going to be somewhere. Okay, let me move everything down, downward, so that it can be easy for us. That means the triangle is going to be on a new position. Triangle is going to be somewhere here. Let me see. Triangle is going to be somewhere here. You get. Uh, yeah. 
you get it a bit <laughs> yeah i do you know we good so we moved we moved this triangle from here we transformed it from here to here okay so if you yeah. transform one of the points one of the vertices it can also it's easy to just transform the other parts of the triangle okay so this is the new position of the triangle do you understand yes it's pretty simple i always yeah, like it's, graphical my teacher's also. been giving us loads of uh, different works to practice over and over again okay so have you done the one they've given to you um yes and it's going to give us more on monday <laughs> okay so now let's look at rotation rotation the next type of transformation is called rotation this one was called what translation while this one is rotation okay so now to rotate a shape or describe a rotation you need these three details the center of rotation the coordinates or the origin the direction you are rotating which is clockwise or anti-clockwise and the angle of rotation example if they say rotate a shape a anti-clockwise that's 90 degrees 90 degrees you are allowed to use tracing paper when answering these questions because it actually helps you okay so you first of all mark the center of rotation okay let's go to our now we're going to take this kind of um question you're going to take this point as the center you choose a point as your center of rotation okay are you seeing the point i choose yeah okay. so i'm going to fill it with what i need to fill it that's the point we are choosing right that's our center yeah. of rotation Good. so now they are now saying let's follow them so that's the point that's we've taken that point as our center okay that is if you look at it, it's the point one, one on the graph. Do you understand? That's the, the mm. part of the triangle that we're taking. That's the part of the triangle mm. we're taking. It's one on the graph. It's located at one, one. Okay. So what next? First mark the center of rotation. We've done that. Then the direction you're rotating anti-clockwise means we're going the other way. We're going yeah, you could. Yeah, opposite. you could do. My teacher said you could do clockwise or anti-clockwise. And if you do yes. anti-clockwise, you just have to remember you have to subtract it. Okay. Okay. So final, finally, the angle will be a ninety degrees. That's a quarter of a turn. So to do this on tracing paper, you trace over the shape A and place your pencil on the point of rotation then keep your pencil fixed twist the paper one quarter and turn anti-clockwise okay so this my app rotating it is a bit difficult because i know there's a way i can rotate this let me see if i can get So sometimes getting the rot rotating part is not so easy for me. Sometimes, okay. Oh, I'm just pardon my my pen is acting up today. I don't know why it's acting up today. So I want to rotate this. Okay. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. What is going on? I want to rotate For this. rotation, you need a tracing paper. Yes, you need a tracing paper. But we can also see, find a way to work on it without tracing paper. Okay, look at this. Rotate. 
No, we are rotating it to the left by 90 degrees, right? So that's it, that's the rotation. But it has to rotate on the axis, on the one, one axis, right? Okay, so now let's, what color should I use? Let me use black, we'll make it thicker. So do you see, do you see how it is? Yeah. Six. Good. So we rotated it by 90 degrees. Rotated it by 90 degrees. So this is the rotation. So it's, I think it's straightforward right? because um, most times mathematics questions that have to do with um, graphical or physical constructions are always easier to understand. Okay. Yeah, they are. I think tomorrow we'll do something that's not transformations because transformations is quite easy. So bit, later yeah. I'll <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll double check my list again and I'll see which one we can do tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So let's go to reflection. So to reflect the shape, all you need is a mirror line. Okay. So we need a line of like an axis, you know, for rotation, you need a point, an axis point. But for reflection, you need a line, a whole line, okay? So, so if they say reflect shape A in the line, Y equal to zero. So let's go to our own question, okay? So this particular, this, this was for rotation, okay? axis okay so now let's go let's go to reflection let's say re our reflection should be y equal to zero that's the that's the axis of reflection so let's say <coughs> excuse me i want to expand this Okay, so let's um, we'll call this reflection axis. Reflection axis. Okay, so what's our reflection axis? Our reflection axis is if it's y equal to zero, then they're talking about this line. This is y equal to zero. Do you agree? Do you agree? Yeah. Good. So if they say rotate on the axis y equal to minus one, then we will use this line. Y equal to yeah. what? Minus one. Minus one. Okay. But what we are solving today is for y equal to zero. Okay. Let's assume we are doing y equal to minus one. So let's use that. Let's. Let's call this y equal to what? Minus one. Minus one. Okay. Y equal to minus one. So that means we will now find out how many steps from the, the triangle. How many steps? We have two steps, right? Two steps from the triangle to this axis. Y equal to minus one. Let me see. Let's see. Why? Let me increase the size of this. Why? To go to minus one. So that's the axis. So we're going to count how many. We're going to count how many steps we have from this triangle to the axis, the reflection axis. Right? And we have two units, mm -hmm. so we're also going to count those same, that same distance. You understand? To get yeah. the reflection, that same distance. So that means we're going to copy this triangle and rotate it, reflect it over, like we're folding it over, folding it over, right? So it's going to give us like a mirror reflection. So let's do, yeah. let's get the triangle. Let me get the triangle. The exact same triangle. 
the pen is acting up today. <laughs> so we're going to rotate it. We are flipping it what? Flipping it. Flipping it uh, horizontal. What happened? Flipping it horizontal. What's happening? Okay. They were flipping it vertical. Good. So we're going back down here. We're putting it here. So that is, this is the reflection. You understand? Let's see what it is here. Okay, so the transformation can be performed with tracing paper or just by ensuring that all corners of the shape are at the same distance from the mirror line. Okay, so they're telling you that this distance should be the same from the yeah. line of reference. Okay, so now let's go to the last one, enlargement. As the name implies, means either increasing or reducing. So the next type of transformation is enlargement. To enlarge a shape or describe an enlargement, you need these two details, the scale factor and the center of enlargement. Now the scale factor is equal to the new length all over the old length. The center of enlargement is the coordinates. So the example, enlarge this shape, A, B, C, D below by a scale factor two about the origin, okay? So we are taking zero as the center of origin. So you say first draw lines from zero, zero through all the corners of the shape. Oh, <laughs> since the scale factor is oh. two, <laughs> you saw what I saw just now, right? <laughs> yeah. We want to extend all those lines to be two times as long as the scale factor three, which you mean three times as long. So the lines are now drawn from the corners of the new shape, which is two times as big. Okay. Okay, beautiful. Two times. So let me see. So AD will be what? Two squares on the original. So AD will be four squares on the large shape. Okay. So now let's practice this. Let's practice this. So. Oh, let me copy this. Sorry. Let me copy this. Let's see. Copy. Delete. Trying to expand this. So, so I'm trying to see if we can do an enlargement here. Okay. So let's see if we can enlarge. Let's draw a new shape. Let's draw a new shape. Okay, let's draw this. Let's draw this. Like a diamond shape, right? Small diamond. Ah, I'm going to push it. Okay, so now let's assume this diamond is labeled this size. It's labeled. Let me change the color. A. B. No, no, it can't be A, B. It has to be A, A, C. Then. Okay. 
let's call this D. Then the other side will be B. Here will be B. Okay. Okay. You understand? So we're trying to enlarge this shape. Let me let me increase it so that it will be easy for us to understand. So we want to enlarge this shape. This shape you're seeing now by okay. Let me see how they compose the question. We want to enlarge this shape by two times. And then we're going to use a reference point zero zero. Okay, that's the center. Zero zero is the center. That's this. This is this is a large enlargement. This is, this is the center. Zero zero. So you just write zero comma zero. So now, how do we do that? How do we do this now? We can say, okay, let me reduce the length, the lines of shape. We are going to extend grid lines through each point, okay? Through each point of the shape. Do you get Each point, so then ex extend grid lines. Oh. You understand? Yes. Okay. So now, now that we've extended grid lines through each of these points, we are now going to construct another shape like this that is going to be two times the size. Now, the size of this shape is just one unit, right? One unit, that's from here to here. So that means the next shape has to be two units. So we're going to look for a point that's going to give us two units. So we can choose here. Choose. It has to tally. With, you know, this graph is not... It's not a perfect graph, okay? It's not a perfect graph. So it's not going to give us the exact... Okay, okay. I think we're we are, we are, we are getting into a bit. Let's, okay. use, let's use this color. It's going to be something like this. Something like this. It's not a perfect, you know, the graph is not a perfect graph. You understand? If it was a perfect graph that is properly scaled, it would have been better than this. Okay? So let's see. Okay. Let me see if I can get the same thing. Okay. Let me increase the size. Okay. So this is just a rough sketch of what, what we're supposed to. These lines are actually supposed to touch every point of this, the, the edges of this shape. So that's kind of what they did here. Are you seeing it? Yeah, I can see it. Good. Mm. Now, the reason why it went this way is because they are on the positive sector of the graph. But our own graph were on the negative sector. Sure, you're seeing it. Oh, so that's why yeah, yeah, went, yeah. went downwards. But remember that you have to draw the line from the reference. So let me write the reference. This is the, ref um, the origin for what? The origin. Let me change it to black. Okay, we'll see. 
origin. Let's change it to origin for what enlargement, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's basically it. Okay. Do you know you know this thing that you're learning? We they don't teach it in Nigeria. <laughs> really? Yes. So now we've come to the end of this session. I hope you understood. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and write your comments. Ask your questions in the comment section and share with your friends. See you in our next class. Bye.